On the planet of the Northern Kao, Goku found himself in a precarious situation. He had brought a cell, on the brink of explosion, ready to sacrifice his life. However, when the explosion occurred, Goku found himself in an unfamiliar place. The room was a stark white and endless expanse of pure white stretching in all directions, the ceiling, the walls, and the floor. This doesn't seem to be the other world, Goku thought, surveying his surroundings. You're right, Goku, a voice echoed. Who are you? Did you bring me here? Goku asked, addressing the mysterious voice. Yes, I brought you here when you were on the verge of death from the explosion. The voice replied. Thank you for that, but you still haven't told me who you are, Goku said, expressing gratitude, but maintaining a sense of caution. I am a god, but from a dimension different from yours. The voice revealed. I see, but what does a god from another dimension want from me? Goku asked, unfazed by the revelation. I see that you are not surprised, the god remarked, slightly disappointed at Goku's reaction. Stranger things have happened to me. Goku shrugged indifferent. Certainly, your world is a little special, the god commented, reflecting on the events with Cell. And why did you save me? Goku inquired. I saved you for several reasons, Goku. You are a special being. Your kindness and self-sacrifice are admirable. Despite everything you've been through in your life, you remain pure of heart. That's why I need you to go to one of the worlds that I oversee, the god explained. Is that world in danger or something? Goku asked, now showing interest. Exactly. In the near future, a great threat could eradicate the humans who inhabit it, the god warned in a serious tone. The god's words excited Goku. His face lit up like a child given a new toy. Okay, I agree to go to that world, Goku responded, brimming with excitement. So fast, the god was taken aback by Goku's swift confirmation. Of course, I'm very excited about a new adventure and fighting new rivals, Goku declared, his enthusiasm palpable. Ha ha ha, you are a unique character, Goku, the god laughed at Goku's childlike excitement. I don't want to hear that from someone who's just a voice, Goku retorted, feigning offense. Well, now all that remains is to send you and see how everything unfolds, the god concluded. Oh yes, one more thing, the world I will send you to is a world where magic reigns, the god informed Goku. Oh, that sounds very exciting, Goku responded, thrilled at the prospect of battling magicians. The god conjured a backpack filled with essentials like food, money, and clothes. Goku was delighted, relieved that he wouldn't have to rely solely on nature for survival as he did in his childhood. With everything set for departure, there was one last matter to address. Hey god, could you let my family know that I'm okay? And they shouldn't worry? They should continue with their lives, Goku requested, concerned for his loved ones. Of course, Goku, consider it done, the god assured him. Thank you very much, Goku expressed his heartfelt gratitude. With that, Goku was transported to the magical world known as Earthland. Upon his first glimpse of the place, Goku found it not so different from his world, except for the new energies he felt, which were vastly different from Ki. Goku, the god's voice resonated in his mind. Is something wrong? Goku asked. Due to certain circumstances, I had to rejuvenate you. I hope it's not an inconvenience, the god explained. Goku approached a nearby lake, and saw his reflection in the water. It was true, he now appeared to be around 16 or 17 years old. Wow I look so young, Goku remarked, touching his face. I apologize. Something happened during the transportation process, and I had to rejuvenate you, the god apologized. Don't worry, I don't mind, Goku reassured the god as he tested his new body by throwing punches into the air. My power remains the same, and this body feels lighter, Goku reported to the god, who seemed concerned. I see, I'm glad you feel that way. Well Goku, I wish you the best on your journey. The god wished him well as his voice faded away. Thank you, god, Goku expressed his gratitude, looking up at the heavens. Our hero then set off in the direction of the many key signatures he sensed nearby. Along the way, he stopped to marvel at every new sight, like a child in a shopping center, far away on an island. On an island far from where Goku was, comma, a black dragon with blue markings on its body stirred. It had sensed a tremendous power and felt threatened. Without hesitation, it took off in the direction of the power. With Goku, Goku continued his journey on foot, choosing to do so in order to admire the new plants and animals he encountered along the way. Flying would have deprived him of this opportunity. I sense an evil power approaching, Goku said, his tone serious as he felt the malevolent energy. Suddenly, a deafening roar echoed through the air. The source of the evil power revealed itself to be a massive black dragon adorned with strange blue markings. 
That roar sounded like a challenge to me, Goku remarked, sensing the dragon's hostility and bloodlust. Without warning, the dragon charged its breath and unleashed a blast at Goku, who stood unfazed. You're not very friendly, Goku retorted, slightly angered by the unprovoked attack. The black dragon glared at the impact site, now shrouded in smoke, expecting its prey to have perished. However, to its surprise, Goku emerged from the smoke, soaring into the sky. I think we'd better finish this before I move on, Goku suggested to the dragon. In an instant, Goku disappeared from the dragon's sight, leaving it confused and scanning its surroundings for its elusive prey. Goku reappeared beneath the dragon, landing a powerful blow to its stomach. The beast let out a cry of pain. Goku then ascended to the dragon's head and delivered another powerful blow, sending the dragon crashing to the ground, unconscious. The creatures of this world are quite violent, Goku observed, standing atop the subdued beast. The best course of action would be to send it back where it came from, Goku decided, grabbing the dragon by its tail and flinging it into the distance. Well let's continue our journey, Goku said to himself, wiping imaginary sweat from his brow. In the future, Goku would learn that the dragon he encountered on his first day in this world was a being that had long terrorized this world. Its name was Acnologia. As Goku neared his destination, he spotted a young girl who appeared to be lost. She seemed to be around the same age as Goku's current appearance, with blonde hair tight in a side ponytail with a brown ribbon and large eyes. Hey, are you lost? Goku asked the young woman. It seems so, I'm headed to the town of Harjin, but I got lost, the young woman admitted, embarrassed. I'm not familiar with that place, but there's a town just a little further ahead, Goku informed her, pointing in the right direction. Really? Thank you so much. My name is Lucy Hartfilia. Lucy introduced herself, extending her hand with a happy smile. Pleased to meet you, Lucy. My name is Sun Goku, but you can just call me Goku, he responded, accepting the handshake with a smile that made Lucy blush. If it's okay with you, can we travel together to the town, Goku? Lucy asked, hoping that Goku would agree so she wouldn't get lost again. Of course, Lucy, I'd be delighted. Goku agreed happy to have someone to talk to on the journey. And so, the two set off for the town of Harjin, where they would soon meet their future friend and comrade.